Hello all. Well, it looks like the, uh, the Shell oil rig, there's a little story to tell on that. Let me show you. Okay, this is the rig up in Alaska, the Gulf of Alaska. This is the rig right here. It looks like the rig was being towed. This is the rig looking down, straight down at it. it. was being towed by a boat, and it was supposed to take several months to get the rig from the Gulf of Alaska down to Seattle for the winter, or at least until the next part of the drilling season, I guess, and then they'll tow it back. It takes literally weeks or months to tow this thing. So it was the fifth day of the journey, and they had a single tow towing this huge rig. This is really quite... Where's my eraser? I'm back. I lost the eraser. This, this isn't in proportion, is it? it? It should be more like this. That's about the proportion about what the two size of crafts were. So this tiny little boat was towing this gigantic um, rig and it was swaying and, and, and the storms, one of the normal storms came up and the rig started, it, it kept breaking the line and so this thing started drifting away. Other boats from Shell came to help and they tried to get a line on the, the rig and it would either break or they couldn't get it contacted. But apparently this went on for hours and hours and then finally the thing ran aground and they weren't able to do anything. That's how big this gigantic platform is, these tiny little boats. So there's an investigation on whether the uh, Obama administration put up enough regulation and that these things were checked beforehand. So apparently the boats weren't strong enough, the cables weren't big enough or strong enough and there wasn't enough boats around. It should have been something like five or six of these little boats towing this thing, I would think. Anyway, that's the latest of what's happening with the grounded shell oil rig in the Gulf of Alaska. Will oil drilling continue in the Gulf of Alaska? Oh yeah, this won't make even a dent. There's been some new science on global climate change and this time th this report is uh, quite serious and I'd like to bring your attention to it. So let's go over to the board. Okay, this is the National Climate Associate Ass Assessment. It's made up of 60 people, 60 experts, scientific experts who are certified. Um, have come up with several things that are absolutely for sure. One thing is for sure that the climate is changing from the top of the atmosphere all the way to the bottom of the ocean, the deepest oceans. They're all changing. I'm just going to show you one part of this climate uh, assessment that they're talking about, and that's the jet stream. This is the globe, Earth. All right, this is the pole. Pick your choice of whatever pole you want. We'll go with North Pole for now. The jet stream normally does something like this. Right? It just sort of meanders in a circle and then there's one in the, the equator that goes around and around and then another one on the South Pole. Where's my eraser? We're still working on two parts of the eraser. Oh, I just ripped it. Okay, one of the, the big changes is the way the jet stream is. Now remember, the jet stream is the division between the warm air from to the south and the cold air to the north. That, that's the wall. It's basically a curtain that goes down and separates the two. Lately, because of climate change and the warming of the poles, that means that the temperatures from here to the equator aren't that strong, and the jet stream begins to meander. And when that happens, you get these really big jet streams that meander sometimes really far, like that. And if you're a country, let's say this is the U.S., right? Let's just put a blob there for the U.S. If you happen to be in one of these blobs that the jet stream's in, if you become in the jet stream, it's going to be cold here. Where if you're in one of these, it's going to be very hot. Uh, let me show you right now what's going on here in the U.S. This is the jet stream. This is San Francisco here. As you can see, the jet stream's going way down into Mexico, right down into here, bringing cold air all the way south into to North, North Mexico or Mexico, Texas, 
all the way up the eastern seaboard. Let's go look at the temperatures. Here's the temperature. See this cold air coming down following that jet stream? Looks just like the jet stream. It's coming down here and going back up here. See how cold it is down south? Way, way down here, it's, it's, it's cold. So that's why everybody this winter has been having such strange weather. Some places are hot, some places are cold. Very cold. Lots of wet and rain over in Europe because they keep getting that jet stream. They're, they're north of the jet stream, making them cold and wet. Whereas if you just go over to Asia, it's very warm and pleasant. In fact, Australia is having heat waves. Of course, they're on the other side of the planet where it's summer. They're having record heat waves. They've never had such heat, and they need to increase or make a new color to identify the new heat wave, the new heat. Heat wave? I don't know. All right, let's go up and see how many barges are in San Francisco Bay. Oh, it looks like there's about eight barges in San Francisco Bay. Yesterday there were six. Very cold and clear out today. Let's see what the gasoline prices are. Inexpensive gas station. Expensive gas station. And what is that Brent crew doing? Okay, today we started out at uh, 110.6, went up to uh, 110.8, 111, kind of did this fell back down to one of almost the starting point back up back down went way back up to uh, 114.4 and then tumbled almost straight down to 110.2 or 0.3 kind of went back up and over and then made an extreme straight up to 114.6 at this point there's, there's still two hours more to go